All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this MacBook Pro. This is a 13-inch model A1706, late 2016 model. Um, I'm going to be replacing the screen on this. Um, yeah, so there's not really much else you can upgrade or change on this. There's the battery you can replace, but I'm not going to be showing that in this video. So anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to need a... Uh, pentalobe 1.2 and then you'll want to remove the screws here so these two in the back corner are longer so remove these two and then remove the four down here the four down here are shorter okay and then to replace the screen you're also going to need a T5 um, a T4 and a let's see I think a T8 as well as a what was this one pentalobe 0 0.8 okay so you'll need all of these t5 t or t4 t5 t8 pentalobe 1.2 and pentalobe 0 0.8 okay anyways once you remove all the screws on the bottom let me keep these in order so i can know what to grab all right you'll want to use the easiest ways with a suction cup though this one has a little air vent gap here so you can lift it here and once you do that, you can get underneath the cover. Um, but as I was saying, uh, it's easiest if you have a suction cup. So just use the suction cup, pull that up. And while you're pulling that up, you can get your fingernails or a pry tool underneath. I would use my fingers because a pry tool won't be able to help you pop this thing as easily. So anyways, I get my fingers all the way down and then I slide them around the side to this. And I use my thumb to push on the other part of the... Mac. So I do that, push on it just like that, and it pops the clip. Okay, then you want to go around. The middle clips will pop really easily. So just go around. Same thing, fingers under this, and then thumb um, pushing on the other part of it, and just pull it up just like that. There was a cloud of dust that came out of this, so I'm most likely going to have to dust this off before I continue. But anyways, after you do that, put the Mac up like this. All right, let me see if I can capture this in video. So now the cover is loose, you can grab, you can get your hands inside and grab it. And then what I do is on this part where the air vent is, you have to push that down. So I put my pinky over the top and then I use my other fingers to pull down on it while I'm also pulling with this hand. And I have this on, um, kind of padded thing on my desk. So that way when you pull it down, if it suddenly slams down, it'll um, be padded and it won't just slam into the desk. Okay, so just pull on this all right just like that it can be a little tough if you can't get this side out you can go on this side and just if you can't get either side out just alternate back and forth but once you get one side the other side will come out pretty easily okay just like that and of course to put it back same thing you have it up slightly at an angle holding it slightly up and then you just slide one corner in at a time you do have to kind of push this area down so that the clips can slide in place like that, and then you go to the other side, same thing, have it slightly angled up, and then you just slide it in, okay? It's a little bit tricky to get it um, to slide back in, and you do have to make sure to get it lined up properly. This side is a little bit over to the left too much, um, but yeah, so the trickiest part is putting this cover back on. So once you get it like lined up with one side like that, then you can kind of slide it in, all right? Just like that go to the other side it's easier it'll be easier for you right now I'm looking at it at a weird angle like from here normally you want to look at it straight down and that'll make it easier to see what you're doing but anyways that's how you get that back in and then these just pop in okay so I'm gonna take it back out some people ask me like to show how to reassemble it but it's basically everything in reverse then just grab this pull this back down okay all right, so that's how we get that out. I'm gonna clean the dust off and I'll be back, okay? So I'm gonna pause the video and I'll be back with the cleaned out MacBook. All right, I'm back. So I cleaned off the dust. Here you can see the clips here in the middle and then the two clips on the sides, okay? And then here you can see the little sliding um, kind of thing that holds it in place that you have to kind of slide this piece in. Okay, so we're gonna set that aside for now. All right, this rubber piece came up a little bit. I'm not sure 
why it's not holding itself in place the way it should. It needs to tuck back under this. Uh, let me see if I can push that with the needle. It's kind of popping out, and then I was trying to adjust it, and it came out completely. So let's tuck it back in there. Okay. Just like that. Okay. It's going to stick up a little bit, but it should be okay when you put the cover. This forms the seal, so that way when the air blows, it just goes over this section. Okay. So we got that. So once you remove the cover... The first thing you want to do, well, if you didn't already, make sure the Mac is off. It's probably going to turn itself back on, um, but you want to make sure it's off. Hmm, their screen is completely blacked out. Maybe the issue they're having, oh, they have the crack here. So I don't know if you can even see it because of the light. There's a little crack here. Oh, yeah, you can see that. Okay, so anyways... You want to make sure to turn off the Mac. I can't see the screen, so I'm just going to press and hold the power button until that crack disappears. There we go. And then what you want to do is um, make sure you grounded yourself. Um, make Touch the floor or something. Touch something metal. And then, um, yeah, make sure that you don't have any static electricity on you. So you want to peel this cover off, okay? This is just a plastic to cover the battery connectors, okay? And you want to kind of go slowly... It has little adhesive foam things that hold it in place, but you just peel it off, okay? So this is very important when uh, replacing the screen or messing with the screen connectors here. You want to disconnect the battery, okay? So first thing you want to do is disconnect this little cable here. Let me zoom in for you. Okay, hopefully you can see this, okay? So what you do, there's this little plastic thing here. You want to lift this. Uh, plastic up it's just a piece of like tape adhesive to hold it in place and then you want to hold that out of the way okay then there's the connector here you just flip the little latch here just flip it up just like that okay once you do that you want to grab this cable here all right it's a little tricky you might have to use like a little toothpick or something I have this little plastic tool so it is kind of held down here with a little adhesive so you have to get underneath. It shouldn't be. Actually, it's not adhesive. It's this little rubber piece that's sticking up from the cover. All right? And once you get underneath, as close as you can to the connector, you want to pull straight away from that from this. Okay? So just like that, you get this connector out. Okay? And then you want to peel this thing up. So avoid like just rolling it back. You want to kind of pull it this pull it that way while you lift it up to keep the cable flat if you can. Okay? So just like this, all right? And I held down here so I didn't accidentally like rip it out to the side. Okay, just like that. After you get that, you wanna remove this screw. This is a T5 screw, okay? Make sure you got the T5, all right? So remove that big screw, okay? After you get that T5 screw out, this piece is a metal flap. You wanna lift it up and this connects the battery to the motherboard. Okay, so you want to just lift it up slightly so that way when you let go, it stays um, disconnected like this. I don't know if you can see the gap here, but now there's a gap here. It's not touching the board below it. Okay, so this is actually the battery circuit board, and then um, this cable also goes into the battery. So both of these need to be connected properly or your battery won't work. Okay, all right, so now that we got the battery completely disconnected, what you want to do is press and hold the power button for 10 to 15 seconds. This will drain any power, or not all of it, but it'll drain it so that there's less chance you'll damage anything on your on your computer, okay? So press and hold the power button, 10 to 15 seconds. Okay. All right, so after you do that, now we're going to want to disconnect um, all the screen connectors here. So this is quite a lengthy process for screen disassembly, um, but it has to be done. So to remove the screen, there are um, five T5 screws and then a whole bunch of T4 screws. So first we're gonna remove the T5 screws here. So there's one here. Okay, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Let me zoom in some more maybe. Okay. Remove that screw. Okay, remove this screw here. T4 
two. All right, we'll remove this screw here. Three. Okay, try and keep all the screws in order because they are different sizes, shapes, and lengths. You don't want to get them all mixed up. All right, fourth screw. So this, uh, these screws are all holding down the board to the for the screen connector. Okay, so usually you'd use um, it's easier to remove the T4 ones first so that way this thing isn't moving around as you're removing them but it doesn't really matter the specific order the main thing is disconnect the battery and press and hold the power button before starting and then the rest you can do in whichever order you want all right so now I'm removing the screw here which is holding these um, wireless antennas in place okay so this screw is actually gets trapped under these wires so to disconnect the wire you just go underneath and you pull up on the tail Okay, so I like to use both fingers like this. You can use whatever you want. You can use tweezers or something, but just go on the tail and then pull it up just like that. Okay, same thing with the last one. Okay, so now we got all three of those antennas disconnected. We can get that screw out. Okay, that screw I think is slightly shorter than the screws that are in the back here. So again, don't mix them up. Okay, if you put the wrong screw in the wrong hole, you can damage things. All right, so now we're going to remove the hinge cover screws and then all the rest. So we're going to switch to the T4 bit now. Okay, so the T4, there's two screws holding the little hinge cover in place, so remove those two. Same thing with the other hinge cover, there's two screws there as well. So we're going to remove these two first, okay. Like that. After you remove those two screws, just lift this plastic cover up like this and then pull it back. Okay, just like that. Same thing to put it back. Make sure when you put this back that it goes underneath the metal housing here. Sometimes people just drop it down on top and then it actually ends up um, on top of the metal piece. You don't want that. Okay, so make sure you tuck it underneath. Okay, so we took that one out. Now we'll remove the other side here. Same thing, two screws. Okay. All right, and then same thing, lift up the plastic piece. And then after you lift it up, you can pull it back. Okay, just like that. Okay, most of the screens won't come with this metal, um, these metal brackets. So you will have to remove these and then transfer them to the new screen. Um, so we're gonna remove these as well. Oops, okay. Remove that screw. Okay, remove that screw. All right, and then get this metal plate and then save this to put on the other one. All right, then you got two screws here holding this spring loaded thing in place. It's the same on both sides. You have the metal thing and then the spring loaded thing. Okay, so just remove those. The screws holding down the spring-loaded part um, are a lot longer. Again, make sure you don't mix up these screws. You don't want to end up damaging something by putting the wrong screw in the wrong place, okay? So to keep them in order, I just lay them out on my desk in the pattern that I see here. So if two are up here, two are back here, on my desk I put it like that. Same thing, okay? Then you got the middle screws here. Well, I'm just gonna go across because for me it's uh, it's a bit easier but you can go in whatever order you want as long as you remember where to put the screws back okay again the main thing is disconnect the battery hold down the power button okay so let's just oh why does this not want to come out come on come out hmm. let's see if i use a smaller t3 it should be t4 but okay hmm it doesn't want to come out here. I'm going to lift the board up and then try and twist it better. The screw doesn't want to come out. That's weird. Hmm. Okay, well, let's move on to the other ones, and then I'll remove those later. Okay. Let's remove that screw. Okay. Hopefully I can remove that one after I remove all these other pieces. Okay. Let me go. 
set the little metal bracket aside. This metal bracket helps hold the LCD or LVDS cable um, down so it doesn't move around too much. All right, let's see here. Did I, did I round off my screwdriver? Okay, well, the rest are coming out. Just like that. Okay. It's probably because I took out the T5 screws first. Okay, so we'll remove that. All right. Take that metal plate, move it out of the way. We'll take out these last two screws here, and then we have to remove the last one holding the LCD connector that is having some trouble. Okay. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, so let's see why this screw's not coming out for some reason. Come on. want to come out it's weird I'm gonna try putting back the t5 screws I don't know if that will help but we'll find out at least the corner ones that's kind of close to it just so the board doesn't move around at all okay just like that now let's try and take that screw out again it doesn't want to come out that's not good I might have to use a thing to remove strip screws. Let's try my other T4 bit. Okay. Let's see if this one will remove it. Oh yeah, I think I messed up my screwdriver bit. Okay, so we got this out with my other T4 screwdriver. Hmm. So I guess this one, it's not too good. It looks like the bit actually broke off. It's too brittle. Okay, so I might have to switch to that for my main set now. Yeah, I'm going to use that in my main set and switch that over to my backup set. All right, so we'll take this metal plate off. Good thing it was the screwdriver, not the screw. Okay. After you remove that plate, you can pop this connector up. You can use a plastic pry tool. I just use my fingernail under here, just like that. Okay, and then I'm gonna switch back to the T5 to remove these two screws that I put back in. Sadly, I messed up one of my T4 bits, so I'm gonna have to get another one. Okay, so set those aside. All right. So now we got most of it. We're gonna have to remove the wireless bar here. And to remove that, you actually have to use a pentalobe. Let me set this aside. So you want to use a pentalobe um, 0.8, which is what they use for iPhones, okay? So we're gonna remove that and then remove all these screws here. So there's a whole bunch. There's six on each side, okay? So remove those. Remove those six and then remove the six from this side.
Can I break another one of my bits? Are these bits not as good? Okay, let me try this one. Yeah, these bits are breaking off. So, looks like they're not as good. I might have to see. I'll get another set and then replace it. We'll see. Okay. So this one I bought specifically just for iPhone repairs. Works really well. Okay, so we got that. All right, I'm gonna have to see. These ones seem to have rounded off or something. Yep, okay. So those, the smaller bits don't work too well. Okay, so we're gonna stick with that. All right, so once you get all of those out, we're gonna have to actually lift and pull the um, the wireless antennas out. So to do that, there's little gaps along here for the air vents. So you can actually use that to pull up the wireless antenna like that. Okay, and then you can lift up the wireless antenna. So this goes um, out, it's underneath this, this piece, okay? But you lift this up and then you kind of have to wiggle this out it's a little bit tricky because of the stuff down here, so just be careful and slowly wiggle it and pull it back, okay? Just like this. All right. Come on, antennas, come out. There we go. So here you go. This is the wireless antenna bar. So if your wireless is not working or something, you might have to replace this. Um, but these are just antennas, so usually your wireless will just have weak signal if this is broken, okay? All right, so now that we got that out, we're going to remove the screen. So this cable is part of the, or connected to the motherboard or the logic board on the other side. So this stays here, but this whole piece we're going to remove as, as long as, um, I mean, as well as this spring things, it's all part of the screen. So what we're going to do, switch to the T8 bit. Okay, oops, where did I put the T8? Here we go. Switch to the T8 bit, and what you do is, let me zoom out, okay, what you do is you open the screen all the way, like this, and then I have the screen kind of like in my lap, so that way I can catch it, and then you take these six screws out, the three screws for each hinge, okay, just like this, and then for these hinge screws, I like to add thread locker after just so that they stay tight and don't come loose. Um, just remove these six screws, okay. Just like this. Okay. So I guess this set, the smaller bits are kind of brittle. They break, they break a little bit too easily. The other ones I have, like it, it's if they're too soft, then the screws, then the bits bend. This one, I guess they're too brittle. But anyways, once you get all those screws out, you let the screen drop slightly, okay? And then you can lift the screen up just like this, and that's how you remove the screen, okay? So now we're going to get the replacement screen. All right, make sure to peel off um, this plastic stuff and the foam that's kind of holding it down. While you're peeling this, you want to hold on to this piece so that when you peel the tape, it doesn't pull the cable up, okay? Just like that. And then remove this foam piece, okay? There you go, so now we got the screen. Can leave the screen protector part on for now and also this. Um, what you wanna do also is open the hinges all the way. So if they're not, if they're in the closed position, they'll be really difficult to kind of bend back up. So what you do is you take the T8 screwdriver bit, okay? And then you use that as a lever to kind of twist it back open, all right? So there you go. Once you do that, you have the screen going like this. Make sure to lift these cables up, okay? So that way they end up on top, okay? All right, and then slowly drop it in, making sure those cables stay on top, okay? All right, 
just like this. And then you might have to kind of wiggle the screen around to get it to drop in place. Okay, just like that. Once you get that in place, you can put back the screws. What I like to do is just put back two of them first. Okay, so the ones closest to the, the center of the MacBook. All right, you'll see why in a bit. Tighten it down. All right, and then what I do is I slowly close the screen, make sure nothing is getting caught. Okay, now that the screen is closed, I like to loosen the screw a little bit on both sides. That way I can line up, make sure the thing is aligned. I use my two fingers on both sides to kind of squeeze it, make sure that it's all like flush all the way around. All right, and then after that, you can tighten down these two screws. Okay. All right, then I will take the thread locker. Zoom back in a bit. Okay, take the thread locker. Grab the screws. Okay. Add a little bit of thread locker to the screw. Usually you don't want to do this over the computer, so I'm just kind of showing you, but there you go. It's not much, very little. You can barely even see it on there, but uh, it's just like a small droplet, okay? And then you can tighten down the screw, all right? And this will help the screw, prevent the screw from coming back out on its own over time from like just the opening and closing motion, all right? Gonna do that, take this screw back out, and then add the thread locker to that as well. Okay. Just like that. one back down add thread locker to it as well okay all right so now that we got the thread locker on all the screws we can turn it back over and start reassembling all the other pieces um, it's actually a good idea to test the whole thing before you um, reassemble so you can actually do that without putting the wireless antennas back on. So first what you want to do is put these spring-loaded ones first, okay? So I'll first put these screws back in with the T5, or not the T5, sorry, the T4. And these are the longer screws, okay? So hold it in place while you put the screw in. So it turns out this old set I had, at least for the small bits are better, but they do bend and twist. So I don't know. <laughs> I mean, at least they still work. So if you look at these bits, it's actually all twisted up. So yeah. All right, so same thing with this side. You want to get this spring loaded piece, twist it over and then get it lined up in there. All right, and then tighten that screw down. Okay, same thing with the last one here. So if you're going to test it first, um, you have to be very careful, but basically get this lined up, get the connector here lined up, and then push it in place, okay? Make sure the connector is 
tight in place because if it's not connected properly and then you try and turn it on you can actually spark some something will burn and then the backlight is no longer going to work okay so now we're going to take the t5 screw for the battery and we're going to put this back you don't need the wireless antennas to test the screen so i'm going to reconnect the battery connector with the t5 screw all right and then we're going to reconnect this small cable here okay so this one can be a little bit tricky to do i don't know if i'll even be able to show it that well in camera but i grab this little tab to hold it out of the way and then the connector itself is actually sticking out down there okay then you kind of have to just slide it back in all right make sure that the connector is slided in um, the cable slid in all the way if you don't have this cable connected all the way it's not going to detect the battery all right then you put the latch back down so as you can see there's a little bit of the gold exposed there that's normal okay so now I'm going to try and power this on and make sure it works and then once I confirm it works I'm going to do the battery drain thing again and then put the rest everything else back together so usually after you disconnect the battery it's not going to turn on unless you plug it in so if you plug it in actually it is turning on on this model interesting normally it doesn't and then you have to plug it in um, but I feel the trackpad moving so it should be turning on we'll give it a few seconds and see oh the battery's low but that's better than before where it was showing the broken icon so we know that it's working so I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the battery hold the power button to make sure that the power is drained from it and then we will reassemble everything else okay so peel this back up flip the latch pull the connector back out okay peel this back up and then undo this screw all right then pull up this connector so that it's not touching open the thing again and then press and hold the power button Okay, about 10 to 15 seconds. All right. All right, so now we got to put back the wireless antennas. So this one's a little tricky. You will, it helps to have some good tweezers or you can use like a little pick or something. Um, but anyways, if you have some good tweezers, what you do is you have to get underneath this board here okay you can actually leave the LCD connector plugged in but if you have trouble and there's not enough room you can unplug it again all right so what you do you slide these antennas in I don't know if you'll be able to even see this okay it's a little tricky you have to get them all to go into that little slot down where you yanked them out from okay and sometimes it helps to kind of bend them oops to bend them so that they go upwards a little bit all right so slide them through kind of have to wiggle it around come on aren't they going in there we go yeah these antennas are being kind of a pain to come out so I'm gonna have to tilt them up a little bit more okay so I kind of like bend the tails to make the wireless antennas go upwards so that way when they go they actually go up in the slot okay Come on. some models of this are easier than others this is one of the more tricky ones so I have to get the tweezers and help guide them up man actually I can't even can't even see them coming out so it's actually getting stuck on the third one so I'm gonna do I'm gonna put this one up here this try and get them to go in a line sorry if you can even see that all right and hopefully that will get them to go come on this is this is the hardest Part, I think actually <laughs> getting the wireless antennas back in okay come on 
camera lights are not going in. For some reason, they don't want to go in. Hmm. It's getting caught. Yeah, I don't know why it's getting caught. They should. Come on. I guess you guys get to see. It's not always easy, okay? <laughs> Sometimes these things, I mean, you're probably like, uh, what do you mean? It's already difficult, but sometimes things don't go nicely all the time. All right. Come on. Get in there. Is it getting caught here in between? Oh, yeah. This third one, I think, is getting caught. There we go. So what I have to do is, oops, sorry. Right here on this side, I'm lifting up the cables. The shortest one was getting caught on the lip of the metal piece. All right, once you get that, once these start coming through, you can start pulling them up over the board, just like this. All right, then this metal piece is gonna be annoying, but just keep going. Get that little one is getting caught on there. Make sure to get it out, just like that. Okay, then this middle thing you gotta lift up as well. Okay, just like that. There we go. Yeah, I know, it was complicated. All right, so slide this in. Make sure these cables are all coming through. Okay, and then this piece, the wireless antennas, they actually have a little thing that slots down here. So get it lined up, and then you have to kind of push that down in the center. And then as you can see, the wireless antenna, it kind of holds itself down towards the center. So when you lift it, it stays down, okay? That's how you know you got it right. You heard it snapped in when I pushed it down. Okay, that's what you want. Okay, then we will take the... <clears throat> oh, I'm going to put this back first. So we're going to put back the pentalobe screws, 0 0.8 screws, which is basically iPhone screws here. All right, so we're going to put back all 12 of these. So I like to put the one there first and then the one on the other side. You don't have to do it exactly in this order, but it helps hold the thing in place while you're doing the rest so you don't have to keep holding it. All right. Same thing with this one. All right. Just like that. All right, now we'll put back the rest of the screws. Oops. Stay in place, there we go. Just like that. Okay. Don't over tighten them because if you tighten them too much, you can actually strip the hole that the screw goes into. Okay. Just tighten it to the point where it becomes difficult to twist and you should be okay. Okay. These screws are very small so the threads actually you can strip them pretty easily so be careful. Okay. Just like that. All right, so now we're gonna put back the T5 screws that are holding this, that would hold that in place. There's four, okay. I like to put one, I like to put them in loosely first just to get everything lined up. All right. And I also twist them backwards to feel like the screw is going in the right place. 
once you feel it click, you know it's going in the right place. Okay. All right, there we go. So now we're gonna tighten those down. Again, don't over tighten these. All right. There we go. And then the last T5 screw, other than the battery one that was holding the antennas down, you wanna put that back as well. Okay, the antennas. Let me see if I can show this. So here, to put them back, you have to get them lined up, right? Make sure that they're completely aligned before pushing them down. I like to line them up and then I rub my fingernail over the top. If they stay in place, I know they're lined up, then I can push it down, okay? Same thing with this one. And do this for all three, okay? Just like that. Okay, there we go. So we've got all three antennas back in place. All right, so now we gotta put back all these T4 screws. Okay, so we'll grab, oops, zoom back out. Grab this, again, you put it in at that angle. And then you can put the screws back in. These, when they're on, like when they have a little plate that's holding on top, I like to put them loosely first so that way I can use that as a pivot point and then I'll tighten it up. Okay, grab that one, same thing. All right, same thing, grab the other one. All right. All right, so let's grab these. So these cables will be kind of like sticking up puffy. So the trick to getting these in place is you get the screw on one, you hold the metal bracket, put the screw in the metal bracket, and then you can use that to kind of guide the screw in place and then tighten it, or I mean, just put it in loosely. Okay, oops. Did they cover the screw holes here? Oh my goodness, this is, the people that sent um, this screen, they covered the screw holes with some tape, so I have to peel all of that up before I can put the screws in. That's annoying. Do I have to peel it up or do I just pierce it? That's kind of strange. Sorry, my head's in the way, I know. I've never seen someone do that before. So... They covered all these screw holes with some adhesive or something. I don't know. I guess I, I'm just going to puncture it with the screws and see. Hopefully that'll work. That's kind of weird. Okay, so I'll take the screw, get that in place, and hopefully the screw is, can puncture it. Okay, I think that worked. That's weird. I guess that's so they know that you actually are, if you return their screen or something, that you're not trying to send back your broken screen. All right. There we go. Same thing. Get one screw. Get the metal plate. Put that over. Line it up. And then put the screw in. Okay. Yeah, that's so weird that they did that. Okay, line this up, same thing, tighten it down, there we go, alright, so now we're going to put the cover for the LCD or LVDS connector, okay, same thing, grab one screw, use this to guide it, especially with that adhesive cover thing. Makes it so much more difficult. Okay. There we go. Use that as a pivot point. Line it up. Okay, there we go. 
All right, and the last two before the battery. in place stop moving it there we go okay tighten that down tighten that down okay well, these screws are good all right now back to the t5 for the battery. All right, put back the battery screw. Oops, sorry, I'm doing this off the camera. There we go. Grab this little tab here. Okay, slide that in. Make sure it goes in all the way. Push the slotch down. Close that. Get this piece, put that back in place. that all right then we get the metal cover cover it up all right oops sorry I'm all zoomed in oops all right get that line it up slide that back in okay other side same thing Line it up, slide it in, pop back out, slide it back in. Okay, there we go. And then pop that back in, push the middle, push the sides. There we go. Switch back to the Pentalobe 1.2 and put back all the bottom screws in. Okay, just like this. Somebody's here. All right, so that's pretty much all there is to it. Oh, why is this going in crooked? All right, that's pretty much all there is to it. Hopefully this video helped you guys. If it did, please like and subscribe because I'll help others find my videos. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.